All right, well, we've got a big canvas out there and it just, just barely fits in my studio. Let's take some blue, some red, some white. I've already got our clear gel and white over the sky area. And as you've already seen from the thumbnail, I am repainting or doing a new version of, an updated version, I should say, of a very, very old painting that I, that I did of willow trees on a, a little lake, pond, or something like that. So this will be, this will be interesting. This will be interesting. I'm working on a 24 by 36, and um, this is a commission painting, and that's why it's this size. And if you're interested in the commission, you can actually contact me on the website, and we can talk about it. But um, yeah, this is about as big as a size as I'm gonna get in this studio. That's why the camera's over here, and it looks all crazy, and I've had to change lenses, and it's, my, my studio really only fits um, 18 by 24 and smaller. And that's just the way they're not much smaller because if you get too much smaller, then you start seeing all of the weird stuff, the, the behind the scenes workings there. So it basically my studio is designed for 18 by 24. There you go. This painting will take a little longer because it is bigger. The bigger the painting, the slower it is. So I'm gonna be here for a little while. I'm gonna take some white, just white, because it's gonna mix with uh, what's down here. So I don't, I'm not really worried about it. Now, let me see. In the original, which I'm guessing we're gonna put on the screen quite a bit for you, in the original, I've got just these little wispy clouds. Now, I don't know how closely I'm gonna to stick to the original. I can tell you how closely I'm gonna to stick to the original. When it comes to doing those willows, I'm going to update them to actually look more like willows. So that, that'll be one thing we change. Hey, let's take a look at the paintings that you guys did from the last painting. It's fun to see what you guys are up to, so definitely share using the hashtag and the links or however you share these days on the screen. So I'm just working in a few of these, few of these clouds. I'm gonna blend them in and I, and I do want, I did not wipe the sky off. I do want them to blend. They're blending. <laughs> they are really blending. You know what? I need to stop and thank our Patreon members. So if you're a member on Patreon, I really appreciate your support. If you're not, you may want to go check it out because we're doing live streams and like some crazy long paintings and just fun stuff. Plus, you can ask me questions directly and I'll get right back to you there. I've wrapped up putting in this basic sketch. It looks pretty decent. Now I'm going to take the... Um, two inch brush just because of the size of it. I think it's gonna work out pretty well. And I've got these trees here. I haven't wiped anything off yet, but I'm sure it's coming soon. All right, right up in here, because I want some of this, in the original it does have some of this like foggy, misty color, and it, that's okay. It's okay. I'm gonna roll with it and see how this plays out. I'm not 100% sure. I'm just gonna tap in some color. I don't want them all to be willow trees. Some of them are going to be uh, non-willow trees. I got some textures higher than I wanted it to be. I'll brush that in. I just want the texture on the tree itself. There you go. What this does is it adds that extra effect. Just in my mind makes this so much better than just, hold on. I mean, sometimes you just push your canvas in like that and it won't bounce around as badly. I'm just gonna throw some color, some of this purple down right here on this area. And then what I'll do is I'll hit it again with a shop towel to blend this in and it'll just melt right in. But this way I've got a variation of things happening within this tree. I don't want too much purple. I sketch with purple because some of that showing through will look like shadow, but I don't want too much. I gotta be careful. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna work in some of these um, shadowy areas. I don't know how shadowy I want to go yet. I guess I got to go somewhat shadowy or we won't have any depth at all. It's just not a very deep painting. You know, it doesn't go back thousands of miles to some vast mountain range. I mean, you know, you throw a rock, you hit the tree on the other side just about. So it's that kind of painting. We do that kind of painting quite a bit, but it's that kind of painting that requires you to keep a special uh, eye on your values and tones in a way that you don't have to as much with the mountain that's a thousand miles away. That one, it tends to come more naturally. This one, you're kind of building in and almost forcing depth where there truly wouldn't be this, it wouldn't be this misty, probably. But you see, you do it anyways in order to create that, the, the depth in the painting, to make it interesting. Got to have it interesting. If it's not interesting, what's the point? <laughs> there you go. 
everything I do, I'm going to take the two inch brush and reflect it right into the water. When we go to do our highlights, I'm also going to reflect those in the water. I think it'll be very pretty. I'm going to take a shop towel and as you might imagine, I'm just going to get my finger dirty. I'm just going to I'm going to blot all of this in order to kind of melt it together. Uh, don't worry about the tree. There you go. What that does is, oh, it just creates that softness, mistiness that I think is just so beautiful in this painting. I think that's what really makes it. And then you see here, I want less and less. This is, of course, also helping me to remove that paint so that I can highlight and do other things. As it is, I haven't removed much paint in this painting, and I'm going to need to start doing that if I want to have any chance at highlighting. I'm going off of an old painting, and I'm trying to change it, right? So I've got my old, or just a photo of my old original sitting off to the side, and I'm using it as a reference, but, but obviously I don't want to just do the same old painting. I'm trying to make it better. And so I just repainted basically the sky in cloud for cloud just about, and then realized that it, uh, it wasn't as good as I was thinking it would be. It needed, it needed help. So in, in the rare move, I'm coming back in and I'm adjusting my sky after the fact. This can be done by wiping the entire sky off with a shop towel. And then as you can see, I'm just blending colors over the top, no problem. You'll notice that the only yellow is right there. <laughs> just tiniest little, tiniest little bit. I was brave. There you go. <laughs> But see, I'm just, I'm bringing in a bit of a, this is like an early morning, the sun's just coming up, something like that. I, I think it's pretty and it adds a lot more of a dynamic lighting effect. And I've got this kind of a light yellowy green and I started here with the darker green, but because I'm doing the highlight side, I've got the yellowy green. Now, why, why are you doing this big willow tree, you know, when you haven't even touched the background yet? Well, I don't know, I just was having fun. Thought I'd mess around. I wanted to do it. There you go. Now, I'm, I'm trying to make this willow tree really the best one I've ever painted. I'm going to, I'm putting a lot of effort into this one. This is going to carry a lot of the weight in the painting. These are not going to matter as much. However detailed I go with this one, we'll kind of show you how not detailed I need to go there or how detailed I do need to be with it. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. Probably doesn't. But that's all right. Okay, right up here, right here, I see a branch. I'm, I, I'll put the branch in later, but I see a branch going right through here. That'll work. So I'm just tapping. I'm actually, maybe do this with an older brush, maybe don't do this with a new brush, and kind of break those bristles open just a little. If you have a brand new uh, flat brush, this probably won't work very well, in which case you would just use the fan brush. There you go. The only reason I had this um, flat brush is because every once in a while I kind of do a little leaf shape. So that touch it, kind of give it a little leaf indication there. Yeah. Okay. That'll work. I'm coming back in with my darks now. I have a real dark green here and I'm placing this over some of the mid-tones and that creates the form of the shape of the tree and that's helping to give that a little bit of a backlit look. Of course we still need to highlight and we may come in with a liner brush, detail brush, something like that and create some of these um, some of the lower uh, hanging ones, maybe we'll put some leaves on, like some actual leaves. I don't know if we, want, if we need to go that detailed with it. I don't know if sometimes too much detail too far away can be a problem, but there is no element, there is no like big tree branch crossing the painting or anything like that. So I think the detail might be appropriate, but we'll see. This is a painting where I'm, I'm just very much going by feel, if you can't tell, very much going by feel on this one. Now I'm gonna work backward. Instead of working, you know, back to front, I'm working front to back in this painting. That is just the way it is. I've got this real pretty pale, pale green color, very pale. And the reason it is is because I don't want to go, I, I, at first, I, first thing I did was I put up there uh, kind of a saturated green that was terrible, absolutely terrible. So no saturated colors in the background. Maybe a little bit on the highlight. No, not even on the highlight. I just want muted colors in the background because color is one of the things that's going to pull your eye um, away, you know, give you separation. And I, I think it's just important. There you go. I am going to leave some of the original base coat showing through. It, truly, it wasn't a base coat. That was a sketch, but I'm using it because I put it on so heavy. I ended up just going with it, you know, up in here and making it into a base coat. Originally, that purple was meant to be a sketch. 
There you go. I'm just gonna quickly underpaint down here, get a lot of this just covered with dark. Just need, just need this thing covered because too much of that light will cause problems trying to figure out, okay, what, you know, where do I need to go? Uh, the original has this big old bush here. I guess I like that, <laughs> I guess, right? Let's see, maybe just lighten that up just a tiniest bit. Gotta be careful, got to be careful with what I'm doing here. I guess I can always wipe it off if I don't like it, but I don't wanna go too crazy yet. Not totally sure yet the direction of the foreground. Because remember, I can kind of go in any which direction. I'm just using that other painting as a loose guide. Now I'm just working in some mossy and grassy color. Some of this will turn into little, maybe flowering bushes and whatnot. I, I put this on very thick, all of this thick, very thick. So we're going to have to remove it with a shop towel before we even think about <laughs> doing anything else. This sort of thing will go muddy, muddy not by painting on it, but just by looking at it. So you gotta be careful, don't look at it too much. Right over here, maybe I want a brighter spot. I do see that in the original. I'm referencing the original a lot. We must be having that on the screen quite a bit. <laughs> uh, now I've absorbed some of the oil out of this area. Carefully remove these towels. Now you gotta do this and pull them before, before it totally dries. So you don't want to dry it totally, you could. You could and then it would fuse to the paint and you wouldn't be able to get it off at all. So there you go. But now I'm gonna come in and there's my color right there. I'm just gonna come in and begin to add a little light and a little form, um, just, just the beginning stages. I'm not gonna go crazy just yet. A little light and a little form. I may wanna ripple on the water. If I do, I'll come back and repair some of this. I wanna get some light on these bushes and whatnot. So I'll tap that in. And because again, this is a bigger painting, some of this takes a little longer. So some, some you know, it's just not gonna, I'm not gonna blast it in as quick as normal. A lot of little variations and a lot of little things to create the overall effect. I'm in the process here of putting in a few comma stroke leaves. I'm using the uh, quarter inch. I use the three quarter just to smoosh some, as you can see here, just smoosh some paint on. Now I am just pulling that paint out. There's not a lot going on here in the background. I'm actually standing very far away from the canvas and I'm holding my brush way at the back end. What that's doing is, is allowing me to see this tree. This tree is probably, oh, 15 inches tall, maybe. It's a tall tree. You know, so I need to see it. If it was tiny, I could stand close, but because it's not, I gotta stand far away so I can see it just the same. You'll do yourself a disservice painting too closely to the canvas. This is why the, the brushes have a long handle so you can get back on them and keeps your strokes looser. It's critical to learn how to paint from the back of the brush. When I first started to paint, this felt really awkward. Now this feels completely normal. And I have just as much control, if not better control, back here when it comes to doing anything like this. Now I'm gonna carefully place on a few highlights here to our to our leaves, to our branch. I guess these are branches, you know? Yeah, I, I say they're branches. And um, they're just a funny shape. So it's weird to call something like that a branch, but I guess that's what it is. There's those main branches and they've got the ones that come down. And let me see here, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm probably gonna do a lot of this with the liner brush, honestly. I think that the, the liner brush will give me a little crispier look, but I'll, I'll do some of it here with the with the detail round brush. And then toward the end of the painting, once everything's kind of established or highlights established, I'm basically I'm establishing the highlight as it comes through the painting. And then I'll worry about doing that with the liner brush to kind of it adds final crisp details later, perhaps. I'm gonna put a little highlight on these rocks. I don't know just exactly how bright I wanna go yet. I may kind of put the first initial highlight on or two, and then I might then I might do the water. The water's really the, the most unfinished thing, that and that big tree over there. So I wanna go ahead and get those things finished before I decide how bright I wanna go. But these rocks are just blank, so I'm gonna at least get some color on them. That's all, just get some color. Even if maybe this isn't a highlight, really this is more of a mid-tone, but it helps to shape and sculpt my rocks out just a bit which I think is good and appropriate and works out pretty well. A little purple even, a little purple touch in those rocks is pretty. And it helps to tie in some with some of the bushes and a lot of blues and purples going on here today. And I think that's, that's nice. I like the way that that offsets some of the green in the trees. 
And I'm going to just sprinkle on a few highlights. I don't want many up here. Just a few on this little tree. And uh, mostly around, well, this is more of a mid-tone, but then when I do come in, I'll be going in kind of along the side with uh, a brighter color. This is a mid-tone. When I do come in with my highlights, it's going to be on the outside. There we go. I'm just going to sprinkle these mid-tones in. Some of them are kind of a purpley feel to them. And that way, just kind of get that tree established. Now, I'm just bringing in a couple of little details. I'm not trying to repaint the tree, but I'm just bouncing along the little limbs. Just bouncing and touching right along. See this? It's, it's, again, not repainting everything. I'm just, boom, trying to hit the high spots of where that light would catch, right? So there's, there's some depth to it. There's high and low places, even within the branch structure. That's, to me, it's just that extra special bonus thing, you know, that makes a big difference and makes it look more three-dimensional and more complete. And so we're gonna do it. I think less is more, you know, definitely that limb makes sense. Maybe leave a little spot that's not as bright, maybe hit one of these with, uh, with a little more highlight. And of course, I've got this thinned down considerably, not quite grass thin. When I paint grass with a liner brush, I, I, I'd say it's a little thinner. It's very similar, but maybe just a little thinner. This is maybe just a little thicker. The reason there is just because I don't need it to be running or dripping off the canvas. And I'm not, I'm not attempting to pull a, a blade of grass that's three quarters of an inch long. I'm just trying to do little dabbles and dots. You know, I'm going to leave that darker there. Let's go over here. Nice. So, of course, if you overdo it, you can take something like a fan brush and just tap it. And it will instantly melt right away because it's so thin. The thin paint sticks really well over the thick paint. But the disadvantage with thin paint is once you touch it, it'll totally melt and become muddy with the background. Which, if you're trying to make it look more subtle, is good. So that's how you can kind of fix it if you go overboard. But the best way in the world to do it is just not to go overboard, if you ask me. <laughs> Now right down here, I'm gonna paint in a few blades of grass. Not as tall, that's definitely a out of control clump. This is um, definitely not growing up as high, right? So I don't wanna, I don't wanna go crazy because otherwise I'd make my grass blades like that long, that long. And um, you know what, that would be weird. I don't think I'd like that, so let's not do that. The original certainly didn't have it. Of course, that doesn't make any difference. I can do, you know, any kind of changes, but I brighten the foreground up some from the original. I think the moodiness of the original is kind of nice down in this area, especially over here. No reason to draw your eye down there. It's just, I think the more you do down here, the more it takes away from the willow tree. This is really quite pretty. Your eye does a pretty good job of bouncing, you know, right in this area. With this being, this kind of area being the subject of the painting. I think that worked out pretty good. And let's just pull in a few more blades of grass just over and over again. Going to take a while to build all these in. And uh, once they're in, though, I think it'll really make it look more complete. And I'm going to be pretty much done here unless I, unless I see something that, that you know, get, catches my eye. I'm going to pretty, pretty well be done. All right, that wraps up this painting for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out our Patreon, our website, our brushes and DVDs and paint and everything else. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button, that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired.